All right, welcome back to the Top Step inside the EQC studio. It is time for the San Juan Seltzer interview. I've got a very special guest uh, joining me right now. I've been waiting since the day before the Mariners opening day. We've got a chance to talk on top of the Mariners dugout in front of a whole bunch of Mariner fans. That is Mariners top prospect, Harry Ford. Harry, how are you doing, champion? Doing good today, man. I like it, dude. Well, I've been waiting to talk to you for a while and have you on the show, so I, I appreciate it. So you've had a pretty big week, your second uh, Futures game. How was it? It was a blast. It was a really good experience again. What uh, What is it about these games, right? So tell, tell us, how, how does this work? So you find out, how, how do you find out you're going to the Futures game? Let, let's go back to last year, obviously the one in Seattle, how did you find out? How did all that go down um, before the 2023 Futures game? Um, just like did a call from uh, our, our field coordinator. And uh, or he might not be field coordinator. He might be something else. Uh, <laughs> but like I just he just calls me and then lets me know. And then I just kind of like don't tell anyone. But I tell my parents and stuff. So that's kind of how it goes. What, what, why don't you want to like tell anyone? Like, how, how well in advance do you know before you're, you're off to the Futures game? Um, maybe a couple of weeks. Okay. I think. And, and why, why can't you tell anyone? Like teammates and stuff like that. Uh, just so like no one posts anything. Gotcha. Or, like, okay. Yeah, like lets people know in advance because, you know, I think MLB wants to, you know, do like a big reveal and stuff. Right. Yeah, right. that kind of make it. That would kind of that in the surprise, I guess. Is it something that like yeah, you know, when you make a futures game, is that like I know you've done it twice now, but is that like important to you? Is that something like oh man, I'm um, you're not saying you're like you're striving for it, but when you make it, is that like a special thing to say? Man, I'm making the futures game right here. Yeah, it's it's definitely a great honor and a great achievement. It's uh like it's really cool to be a part of. Because, I mean, man, like they flash up all the, the guys who have been part of the Futures game. They used to do it back in the day, Harry. I don't know if you realize this, but they used to do the international versus the American guys. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you – did you know that or not? Yeah. Yeah, and I always sat there. I was like, you know what? They kind of should do an American and National League because here's the deal, man. I, I come from Australia, so I'd obviously be in the international side. I never made the team. And I was like, oh, man, like it's kind of I'm, – I'm not saying it's not – easier to make the team but they always kind of wanted like the whole world represented so i was looking at go man okay i'm putting up decent numbers i know they want uh, guys besides some of the dominican guys and venezuelan dudes i've got a chance here i never made it there's always some other australian making it instead of me those years but now they do the the american national so it's like legit top prospects you know from every team from every little corner all over the place so it's yeah. a big it's a big deal man how, how does that work so you fly in do you fly in the day before or how, how many days in advance do you get down there the day before and then oh no the way day after oh you just quick. you just fly in fly out yeah it's real quick Couple is there days. anything is there anything cool like you guys get to do besides playing in the game oh yeah i mean like i got to go to the nike party and I mean, like we have a meeting in the morning and getting to talk to the coaches, like right. former former players and everything. That's those are the coolest parts. Yeah, it's a yeah. full day, right? Who are the, who are the coaches for you? We had Prince Fielder, Adrian Beltre, Nelson Cruz, uh, Elvis Andrews. Um, we had. Uh, missing some guys but those were on our those were the majority of the guys that were on, on our side oh and um Raul Banez, yeah oh nice there you go yeah he's seasick that's awesome so from that like they obviously have a team meeting like are they are they good talkers in front of the group like I mean because I know they show some of it like I see him on MLB Network you know they're showing a little bit of uh the guys talking to you but is it something is it an opportunity where you can you know, talk to them off to the side as well. Like, I mean, is it something where you're talking to, like, say, a bill tray and asking questions, or is it just too quick? Like, they're too busy. Yeah, no, I talk to all of them individually. Right. And, like, I got a chance to talk to everybody. So, they, we get a lot of time. They're not necess- They're not really focused on coaching. Yeah, gotcha. Is that something that you, like, in whether it be in spring training, you know, your time, like, you know, from professional baseball on – do you try and seek out guys that you, whether it be look up to or guys that had success and try and have those conversations? Is that a big deal for you? A thousand percent, yeah. Right. I just like getting to talk to them and getting to just like, 
no like know how the their career went like how it was created through their eyes and not through right. like you know the like seeing them as like uh just some like uh like crazy dream dreamy yeah. figure you know so what if you can think back what are some like conversations you've had that you're like man i'll never forget that conversation um Honestly, this year talking to Prince Fielder, I like, really? that was really cool. I had a lot of good talks with him. Like what? Like like like? Give me something because I played against him, man, and, and it was kind of crazy how his career ended. He was dude. He was a force, man. Like, mm -hmm. oh, he was such a tough out, especially you know left handed pitcher, left on left. It's just like yeah, this is a waste of time. Like, I mean, bring someone else in because dude, he yeah. was such he was a he was such a big. So what was some like with Prince? Like what would Prince give you? Because he's kind of been out of he's kind of been out of like the limelight a lot you know, last few years. So it's good to see him back, you know, doing what he's doing. But what were some things you talked to Prince about? Talk about hitting. Like, he was just give, he was in the cage with me, so he was giving me some pointers about, like, my hands and what to focus on and stuff. Right. Uh, really simple, but, like, just getting to, like, going deep and talk, talking about stuff. Yeah, yeah. Did he, did he talk about it all, like, you know, the way it went down for him towards the end of his career? No, I never asked him. Yeah, right. It was kind of, yeah, it was crazy, man. Like the way, like I said, the way it finished. And I remember because, like, I I remember playing against him, man. I'm talking like when he first got in the minor leagues, and I was just like, he was, he had no business. This is back when it was like low A, right? Like it was the Midwest League. Uh, he had no business being there. Like he should have been in Double A, like right away. But because of his age, like, oh no, you know, hey, <clears throat> stick around here with some of these other scrubs and 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 hit because. Yeah, we can't rush you to, but he had no business being there, man. He just crushed balls. He he was sca a scary dude to face. So, yeah. yeah. So, so you guys fly in and then play the game, and then literally you fly out, and then so with with the break, like, did you get up to anything in the break, or you just kind of hung out? I went to I went back home, to Georgia. I got okay. to see my my family. I saw everybody, my friends, and nice. uh, got to hit a little bit too, which was good. And right. uh, yeah, I was just back home living life. So, so when you when you get home to hit in a break mid season, who are you hitting with? Um, my my guy, uh, uh, his name's Zach. Okay, Zach. Uh, I can't think of his last name, but uh, just a guy I've worked with for a couple of years. Oh no way! Okay, so is he kind of like, is he someone you like you're reaching out to during the season? Hey, check out this video. I haven't been. I haven't been like that with him, but I might start because I, right. cause I could just been getting to some bad habits and I kind of want to stay on point. Right. So I definitely might start like checking out more and stuff. Yeah. I feel like that's, that's something that like, I remember back when I was playing, man, like I remember if you had someone off to the side, I remember for me, Tom house, who's like, I don't know if you if you remember the name, Tom yeah. house, big pitching guru. Yeah. Like I worked out with him in the winners <laughs> And it was like so taboo, some of the stuff he was doing. But I would like really lean heavily on him. Like, hey, Tom, check this out. What do you got? But it was kind of one of those things where like the organization wasn't super keen on you like seeking out external coaches during the season. And I yeah. feel like now it's just way more kind of like, all right, yeah, you, you got your hitting guy. That's fine. I know like the guys down the street, you know, drive line, like there's guys who really lean heavily on them. But um yeah, it, it's it's funny, man. So you mentioned you mentioned just more recently you've been leaning on him. Why is that? Like, what 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 do you think you're going through at the moment? I'm just like just haven't been consistently driving the ball well. Like, just uh, right. like in a and like just kind of feel funky a little bit. So I wanted to work some kinks out and see what was going on. Right. And so how how did you and how did you and Zach link up? Like, how long you been working with him for? I hit with him in the off season, uh, twenty two going into twenty three. Gotcha. And uh, last season I was hurt, so I, last off season I was hurt, so I couldn't. And so I went back this year, and to, like in the break. Gotcha. Just, and, this is it. And this is someone. This is someone just in your local, in your hometown. Mm hmm. Nice man. And it, it, it's just it's. I got to ask you this because I'm sure you've come across all kinds of coaches and stuff like that. And, and yeah, you know, for me, man, it, it was like information. It could be great information but if I don't trust it or if it just doesn't feel right. Yeah. Nothing yeah. clicks. 
So if you find that dude, like it, it makes such a difference, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, no. It, yeah, man, it's uh, God, man, it's so tough, especially during the season, especially where yeah. you're at now, dude. I feel like you're at that point now where you're obviously like a, a top prospect. Um, you're you're in Double A right now. I mean, because last time, well, not last time we hung out last year, around this time last year, if you remember. You helped me coach a uh, Everett <laughs> baseball <Yeah>. camp <laughs> at Everett. You know? Yeah, that was cool. Oh, yeah, that was, that was a blast. So maybe get into that a little bit later. But you're at that yeah. point now, man, where you're kind of pushing towards, all right, I'm in double A. I'm kind of in striking distance now, right? And uh -huh. there's been, you know, you, you're one of the, the biggest prospects in baseball, let alone the Mariner system. Do you think about that a lot? Like, are you sitting there going, oh, man, I'm so, I'm so close. I'm a few conversations away from Zach where I'm just start driving the ball again for a good couple of weeks. And, man, I might get a phone call at any moment. Do you think about that, at, like, at this present time right now? Uh, I mean, it definitely, uh, like, passes in my brain sometimes, you know, the reality of it. Um, because because one guy one guy you played with last year Tyler Locklear and he just got called called back up. I saw yeah. him. I was like, hold on, Tyler was in Everett last year with Harry. So yeah. do you, I mean, you look at that and you're thinking to yourself, man, like it's that close. Yeah, I mean, it definitely goes through my brain sometimes. Right, but it's not helpful when I when I hold on to it. What, what do you mean by that? Because like it just kind of puts like all this increased pressure. And increased like uh, kind of like like standards almost for mm -hmm. your, for yourself. Yeah, because like all, all of a sudden, like you know, a one for three isn't good enough. Right. Or like or like you know what you're doing isn't good enough because it has to be like major league standards. Gotcha. When you when you when you think that way, so I kind of tried my best not to not to get too far deep into it in my head. Do you, do you fall into that trap where like, because you are Harry Ford, right? We talk about you all the time. I know I do. Um, and I apologize for putting the, uh, the put that extra pressure. But do you feel like <clears throat> there's times where you've fallen into that trap where you're like, man, like <clears throat> if 0 for 4 is not good enough and now I'm, I'm getting in my head a little bit or, or one, you know, one for two for 10 or whatever. Have you fallen into that trap where, that's just played on your mind a ton because like you, you, you know that outside, not just you, but external expectations, whether it <clears throat> your family, your friends, they read about you all the time, the front office, everyone outside of, cause you, you know, you obviously, you know, you're good enough, but you, you feel like you're feeling that pressure and you, and you slip into that, that sort of mindset. Yeah, it definitely like it. I mean, I'm human. Like it, it happens. You know, or like sometimes when I do really good for a stretch, I think that like, oh, like this is this new standard and this is what I'm going to be like forever. Right. But like, like it happens, it, it, it comes and goes sometimes. Is there like, is it a big jump for you going from A ball to double A? Do you feel the difference in regards to the pitching, the way they're pitching you? Uh, what's, what's different? What stands out to you in double A over A ball? Um, I'd say just like, older guys the consistency um not too many not they're just just this the floor is just some raised a lot higher right you know gotcha. like there's no guys out there who are like just you know easy at bats right everyone kind of got something and the reason why they're that far so yeah yeah I feel like too, and, and the way it is kind of structured now, uh, I don't think it was this way, you know, even five years ago or so, but yeah, they, they say in AAA is guys who, you know, can pitch, um, know how to command a baseball more, but double A is more stuff. Like it's just littered with dudes with just big prospect, just straight stuff, even yeah. though they're trying to refine. Is that true? Uh, yeah, I think I'd say it's pretty true. Like, um, Obviously, I don't really have. I don't. I can't compare it, but yeah, like, right. uh, guys definitely have good stuff for yeah, sure. Yeah. Do you? I'm gonna ask you this, man. The trade deadline's coming up. All right. Uh huh. And <laughs> the Mariners are in a situation now where the fans, uh, the, the the fans look at this and go, "Oh yeah, hey, look, we need offense. We need to go big here because it's kind of like that window." 
uh, of opportunity for them because you know they're, they're uh, as we speak right now they're, they're hovering around with the Houston Astros and the AL West. They've actually lost a bunch of games, are ten games up. But you know, offensively, the Mariners have struggled. Everyone knows that. That'd be the first to tell you that. That lineup would be the first to tell you. So everyone's yeah. kind of in this mindset now, from a fan's point of view. Oh, they have to go and get that one big name and give up that really good farm system, right? And so in your position now, and you've got friends, man, you've you got a bunch of friends who are top prospects and guys who are, you know, whether it be an A ball, double A, triple A, does that, is that a conversation that goes on um, between you and your teammates or your friends talking about, oh man, uh, where you, not where you're playing GM in your head, but the conversation comes up about different scenarios and, and everything with what could happen at the trade deadline? I wouldn't say it gets brought up very much. I'd say probably for most guys, most guys, that's probably like a sore subject. You know? Really? Like, like, I mean, what like way? in what way? I don't know how it is for other guys. I know how it is for me. Like, like I don't, I don't like when people bring, like, tell me about all the like the you know the, 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 the projected trades and like the possibilities and stuff because like nobody knows the thing and it's no <laughs> point in trying. So yeah. like. <laughs> It's not something that gets talked about. Because uh, yeah, I had Ryan Bliss on a few weeks back, and he got traded last year. Big, uh, I wouldn't call it a huge trade, but he was doing really well. Matter of fact, he was in Double A. Actually, he played. The, I think he played in the Futures game, right, Ryan Bliss? Yeah, he did. Yeah, and he was he was raking, and yeah. so he got to that point where like it was coming around the trade deadline, and every every like name that came up, whether it be like in the clubhouse, um, you know, or or outside the clubhouse. They were completely off. And he got to a point where he was reading and looking up stuff. And he's like, oh, I guess I'm I'm not going to be traded here. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a dude. Like, I'm one of the D-backs up and coming. And then just yeah. like that, it just hit him. It just surprised Dang. him, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I get it. It's, it's funny, man. I remember back in the day, especially, I feel like the conversation gets more mature, though, as you get older. I remember him back in, like, like I'm talking like the lower levels of A ball. They're like, oh man, you're getting traded for sure. And then and then all of a sudden, like some young guy will get traded that no one even suspects. Yeah. And then guys, it's like guys will get mad, like, oh, why didn't I get traded? You know what I mean? And then as you get uh -huh. like further up through A ball and then into double A, triple A, you, you kind of have a little bit more of a serious conversation about it. But you're right, man. It is so hard to, you know, essentially predict or you know, read into that stuff because it's always it's always something completely different. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it is. So, so you said it's a sore subject. So, when people bring up your name, are you talking about like friends of yours, or are you talking about stuff you read on online? Yeah, like friends, and family. Okay, oh, I just so, don't so, like having having those talks. And are we talking like mum and dad? Where they're like, or, or are you yes. talking? Your, Okay, and they're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so man, it's so funny, dude. By the way, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna ask you this then. My my mum, especially, I remember when she came over. I'd, I'd be playing in, in the minor leagues, and I'd be pitching. I'm like, damn, I'm doing well. Like four or five innings shutout. I look up, my where, where is she sitting? There's the family section. She couldn't watch games. She was always so nervous. And then any time my name came up in anything, good or bad, like especially if it was criticism, oh man, she was like. She wanted to like start like a Facebook account and go and just rip whoever wrote it. It's crazy. Yeah. Is, is, is that what is that what the Fords are, are dealing with? Is that what we're dealing my with, dad, with? My dad is like that. For sure. <laughs> really? Like, he goes on Twitter and he wants to just comment back to every single person who has something to say. <laughs> is, <laughs> is he is he is he um, you don't have to say his Twitter account if he's got like a burner account or something. Is it a situation because dude, my mom's the same way, even till now. Like and I'm like, and mom, if you're listening or watching, I apologize. But it's true. You need to chill out. But uh, that's a, they, obviously mom and dad, mate. They love you. Have you had yeah. conversations with your dad and say, hey, listen, you can't say that or, or cut yeah. it out? Or, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, I have. <laughs> so <laughs> and do you have something... <clears throat> do you have some examples of like something that, that went down and he got all upset over it? You could probably look them up on Twitter. I mean, they're, they're, it's probably somewhere, but... I don't have any any specific ones. It's just like <laughs> it just keeps going and going, and like it just ends up being more brought up and stuff. Like if oh. if you just what uh, besides that you just like ignore it or something. 
I love it, dude. And look, I, I don't love it because I know what you're dealing with and I, I feel bad for you. But I love it the fact that, look, like, you know, it, people forget because I know Cal Rawley's old man, his dad on Facebook, he, anytime someone says something about Cal, he'll, he'll, he'll chime right in and, and get yeah. after it on, on Facebook. I know that because a friend of mine is down in Tennessee and he, I, I believe he had Cal as a coach. And so he's friends with him on Facebook and he keeps sending me screenshots. I'm like, oh my God. But I, I get it, man. I totally understand. I, I think I think we all deal with that with mom and dad because I don't understand the power of social media. The problem is though, and this is what you need to tell them, it's like the minute you comment back, they win. Doesn't matter what it is. They absolutely yeah. win. I mean, mm-hmm. could you imagine being some punter on social media? Just Just yeah. paint this picture. Someone's like, oh, yeah, Harry Ford sucks or whatever. Yeah, it could be like, oh, Harry Ford went over four or, or they need to trade him or whatever it may be. And then Mr. Ford gets on, chimes in. Could you imagine being that dude? You're like, oh, man, I got Harry. He'd be showing all his friends. Oh, I got Harry yeah. Ford's dad. Look at this. Like, he wrote back to me. He'd be he'd be stoked over it. Even yeah, though, yeah, they love that. Oh, they love it. They love yeah. it. So, you know, what's your dad's name? What's his first name? Alan. Well, listen, Alan. If you're watching, mate, you need to chill out. Trust me. I, I've dealt with it. I've got I've got parents back in Australia, Alan. And I'm telling you right now, man. That, that it, it it need to quit it. But no, I, I totally get it, man. I absolutely get it. Um, hey, speaking of that, to, speaking of you know, when we're talking, you're in Double A right now. You got the trade deadline coming up. Uh, I I don't want you. I don't want you to go anywhere. I don't think you need to go the anywhere. Trade deadline? It's July 31st. Oh. Wow, yeah, that's so it's coming up. That's his birthday. Well, there, oh, there you go. It's a sign. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, I have said this thousands of times, man. I, I hope you don't go anywhere for a lot of different reasons. Everything you do, every, the way I've seen you off the field too. I talked about my camp. And by the way, if you don't know what I'm referring to, maybe I should put the, the, the video up here. But Harry Ford had a bunch of 10-year-olds, fired up 10-year-olds who were so stoked to see Harry Ford on the field coaching them at my baseball camp up at Funko Field, big shout out to the Everett Aqua Sox, doing the gritty all the way, to big lap doing the gritty, dude. You, I'm telling you, mate, you have, I've gotten emails about that. I don't know if I've told you this properly, but that changed some kids' lives, man. Kids are still talking about that. And I've got kids coming back. I'm, I'm doing another camp in Everett. And they're like, is Harry Ford coming? I'm like, no, he's moved on. Like, man. He's, he's, not, he's not in the Everett Aqua Sox. In, in spirit. In spirit, that's right. Yeah, you, I might have to have you do a big video on the uh, on the on the big the, the big screen up there and yeah, and talk to the kids. No, it, it it was so awesome. But hey, I'm gonna ask you this, man. People ask me this all the time, and I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. How important is catching to you? Is that a position you're like? I absolutely love it. It's part of me. This is what I want to do. Yeah, I mean that's you know I started catching when I was eight, and like. Catching for me is just it brings it, it makes the game fun, right? It, it, it's what it's the big part of what I love about baseball, just being involved in every play and getting you know beat down and everything. Like yeah. it's just like what I love in baseball. But at the same time, I'm I understand that like this is a kids game and this, I mean it, it is a kids game, but it's also like. You know, we're trying to put together a winning team, right. and like, if the team if the team needs me to play somewhere else, then sure, go for it. You know, for sure, I'll, I'll, I'll play wherever you need me. But catching is my that's my love in baseball. Yeah, right. I, I figured that too. I mean, people always say people who have never played, they're always like, "Oh, he can just play another position." So make sure he's up here in the big leagues with Cal and Julio, and yeah, and get yeah. The, whole, the band back together. It's like it's not that simple because like. Yeah, I'm not saying that you would get up and 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 you, let's say you were playing a different position, that you would you know change your mindset or change the the character and attitude that you have, which I just talked about because I, I saw you doing off the field with the kids, but it's one of these ones like where you know subconsciously like man I really love to catch and like spending every day going man is there any way I could get behind the dish you know that's why I'm asking like I'm curious like. If it was a situation where if the Mariners even have the Mariners like worked you out in different positions besides catching, yeah, we're working on getting uh, me uh, trying to do outfield. Okay, Is, and does that does that float your boat like catching or not the same or what? I mean, it's not the same, but it's it's cool. I'm on a baseball field playing. 
Right. You know? You still get to hit. And, but you can run a little bit too, right? Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it's not like, again, I put it this way. I'll be honest with you that I... I caught you at the World Baseball Classic qualifiers in Germany. I've told you this probably 20 times. Like, yeah, man, I get it. But I was there. And I remember everyone was fired up. And it was kind of good for me because we had a lot of people, Mariner fans, watching these qualifiers because of you. Because you were playing for Great Britain. It brought so much attention from my same circle. And uh, I'll be, I'll, I'm not going to lie, Harry. I'll, I'll admit. Before going into there, I looked at you and in, 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 as a player, I talked to Mariners people and they said, look, he's so athletic. I'm like, well, why is he catching? Like, get him out there playing a different position. He can run a little yeah. bit, got a good arm. But I'm not going to lie, dude. I watched you behind the dish and I could tell, like, there was something there. I'm like, oh, actually, and that's why I want to ask you, that's why I wanted to ask you that, where you took a lot of pride in behind the plate. It wasn't something like, oh, well, hey, I caught in high school and, and I want to continue that on, but I'm going to transition to another team. And then I watched you throw down to second base. I was like, hold on. I changed my mind because I, I kept saying, I had no idea. I was just, you know, just sometimes yeah. I just talk out, talk out of, you know, say whatever. And I was like, oh, I can see him transition to a different team, trying to sound, a uh, different position, trying to sound smart. But um, I was watching you catch. I'm like, no, 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 keep him behind the dish. <laughs> He's good defensively. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not bad. So, yeah, it, it, was, it was good. However, I just look at it and go, man, like you got Cal there. You want a guy like Harry Ford to play every single day. Man, you could you can kind of see that, you know, and I think yeah. that's that's why too, when when your name comes up a lot, you know, in regards to the trade deadline and all this kind of stuff, is because you have that thing about where you're not one dimensional. You can play different positions as well, which, which your stock goes through the roof. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So make it makes it a little bit different. Now, listen, before you jumped on, you had something at your feet that we can't see. That you said you just started, or how, how long have you been? Yeah. It, it, let, let's see it, man. What, what, what do we got? Look thing. at that. Where did you get that guitar from? Mr. Scott Boris. Thank you very much. Really? <laughs> <laughs> how, what's the backstory here with this with the guitar? I got it. I got it for the All Star game. No way. Uh, it was on my locker when I got there, and I was like, "Whoa, it's crazy. that is cool." Yeah. That is cool. And so this was just, a, if you're a Boris client, this is something, was he giving everyone guitars? Yeah, or did he, it was like okay. every Boris guy got a guitar. Oh, so nice. Okay. It was very nice of him because it's a very nice guitar too. So. Oh, it is. It's, not, it's yeah. not just some, it's not some, you know, $50 thing, but it's just got no. cool, a cool paint job. It's a nice one. I like no, it. No, it's a very, very nice one. So I I'm very appreciative. <laughs> I expect nothing less. Now, do we had you played the guitar before you got that in your locker just a couple of days ago? Um, yeah, I have another one over here, but like, okay. I like, I like very, very like beginner play, right? like <laughs> learn a few notes. How long have you been playing for? Um, you know, I started playing, I started practicing at like, probably like, I don't even remember when it was. It's probably like very beginning of this year because I, I wanted okay. so I was I was starting a Bible study with my with my with my group like right. with some players and I wanted to be able to play a song so we could like sing and stuff so I started right. just trying to play the song because I went to a different Bible study and like the guys like everyone there that's what they did they had someone play the guitar and everyone sang and it was so beautiful and I was like man we're gonna yeah. redo this and so I tried redoing it and it was horrible. Like not not it wasn't horrible. It just didn't it didn't sound how I thought it would sound. You know, I don't think the guys are really into singing much. But like just kept just like been playing it since so like, you know. Right. Pick it up yeah. every now and then. That's yeah, amazing, man. When when you hear music like yeah, you can listen to whatever kind of music, but when you even if you're not into the type of music you're listening to, if you hear it live and you hear someone who's really good, you're like, Oh man, I want to try that. Yeah, you think you think it would be so easy, I right? Know. <laughs> I know, big time. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. you're like, dang, I can do that. Give me that. Oh, for sure. You know, no, it's, it's funny. It's... I got way too into it. So I, I I played the guitar when I was a teenager. I played bass, played and and like elect, uh, electric electric because I just like loud noises, right? I could uh -huh. never I could never dial in the acoustic, and everyone kept saying, "Dude, you will not be able to play a guitar at full strength unless you can dial in that acoustic guitar." And uh, I was just like, ah, you know, I had friends who played the acoustic, but that was so true. Like, so I, I got to a place where I was literally just getting effects pedals, 
bigger amplifiers, better guitars, just because I was trying to mask how bad I was at playing the guitar. And I spent, I had a spring training where I just went nuts. And that's all I did was, was play the guitar and just make noises. But I, I really wish I got dialed in on the, on the acoustic, just like that Mariners guitar you had, man, just, just, to, just to, have, to, to really learn how to play. Because I'm with you. I, I hear live music, any kind of live music. I'm like, oh, man, I, w- I want to go do that. You know? Yeah. Oh, big time. Man, you got to get back into it. I know, dude, I know. I've set up the guitars. My kids, my, my daughter's got a little, like a little mini pink electric guitar, but I'm like, no, no, I don't want her to make the same mistakes. We've got a whole, like I'm, I'm sitting downstairs at my house, but we've got a whole the guitars and amps, everything set up. Oh, I, 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 yeah, I need to get dialed in for sure. If you, hey, yeah. when you get called up, when you're with the Mariners, I'll, I'll, you, you can come over. You, I've got all kinds of, all kinds of stuff out that door um, that can okay. make some, make some, make some noise. That is for sure. And I'll, I'll put nice. you to the test. That's for sure. Hey, listen, before you go, we do have a very special segment. I ask my guests all the time. By the way, this is the Sam One Seltzer interview with Harry Ford. I do, uh, I, I have the How to Speak Australian segment. Now, you do have British tires. It's your yeah. dad, right? Your dad's British, yeah? Yeah. All right. So you I got to do an accent? No, no, you don't have to do an accent. You can try if you want. <laughs> but it's How to Speak Australian. It's brought to you by the Kangaroo and Kiwi Pub, which is in Ballard. Uh, another place that it has some it has some British stuff. A lot of Brits go there as well. But I'm gonna I'm thinking up a word here for Harry Ford. I don't want to make it too easy because you do have your dad is English, and I don't want to throw any word that we've just taken from the English, like half our language, basically half our words that we use that Americans don't use. We steal it from the British. So I'm, I'm thinking up one. You have to guess it now. If you don't guess it, that allows other people on social media to, to try and guess it. So okay. the how to, this is the How to Speak Australian segment. And if you do want to try and play along and guess the word, if Harry doesn't get it, I'm predicting he's not going to get it. Go to at the Top Step TV over at Twitter or Instagram, and you can put hash, uh, hashtag TTS mate and give it a red hot crack. Now, the word, the Australian word I'm going to give you is Dunny. Do you know what a dunny is, Harry Ford? A dunny? Oh, no chance. Stuff. No <laughs> chance. Do you want to have a? You want to have a guess? A dunny. Can you use it in a sentence? Oh, mate, I'm. Uh, I don't want to give it away. I. Man, I'm not feeling too great. I need to quickly go to the dunny. I'm trying to say it more so you don't get it so easily. Like the loo. Oh, boom. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> Harry Ford has beaten you to the punch. Uh, everyone who's watching along, listening. Yes, it is the Lou. Thank you very much. That's the English one. Now, if you don't... Actually, you know what? We'll keep it at that. Because some people watching, listening, they might have to go Google what the Lou is. So we're going to keep it at that. We're going to throw some <laughs> English tie to it. And if you can go to uh, hashtag Good TTS, daddy. mate. That's, I like it. I like that little Are there more words? Is it just one? That's it. Just the It's the dunny. The oh, Dunny man. can. It's very Australian, obviously. I, we didn't steal it from the English. I did, my yeah. brother-in-law is English, by the way. He's like, you just steal all our and you, all our words anyway. So what are you talking about? Yeah. All right. So we, we get, the hint is the Lou. That's the English hint for you. Uh, by the way, I was just in London for my first time. I absolutely loved it. I was over there doing really? the Mets Philly series. Yeah, yeah. It was a blast. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I loved it. I, man. Hope, I, I hope that we get to go over there one day. Oh, yeah. I, I did. That I was thinking so that. Cool. I was like, the Mariners... That would be perfect. It, to me, to. Just, it makes too much sense. By the time yeah. you get up, I'm going to try and push for them to go to yeah, MLB Europe. If, you, yeah, if, you, if you're watching, listening, you may not be. Make the Mariners get over to London. So Harry Ford, hey, that makes, that makes too much sense. I you got to push, push for us to get in Australia too because we got oh, – uh, you know, yeah. you know Town, Townsend? I sure do. Blake Townsend. Yeah. I've, known him, I've known him for a long time. Yes. Yeah, you, you we friend, got him you, too. You buddies with Blake Townsend? Yeah, friends. I haven't seen him in a long time. Yeah, yeah. I was we were co- I was closer with them when we were in the Arizona uh, the right. rookie ball together. But now he's in Everett, and I'm I'm here, so I don't, I don't really see him anymore. Yeah, I noticed. I think I asked you asked him about you back in the day, and he's like, yeah, he's he's the man. I, he shares some of his stuff on social. Anytime you do something good, he'll share it. So I'm like, ah, oh, they must be friends for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a great, yeah, <clears throat> Blake's the man, dude. So I would love to go back to Australia. That'd be number one. But hey, if we go back to London, that's all right. Because if they figure out that, hey, look, we've got Harry Ford, the big ambassador from the UK, 
That would yeah. be awesome. Now I had a blast, man. I, the first day I got there, I'm like, I got to go do the touristy thing, sit on top yeah. of the double decker bus, the the, the hop on, hop off, and gotcha. just cruise around. It was so good, man. It was it was so good. Your dad's is, probably cringing right now if he's listening to that, but that's all right. <laughs> is there fish? Is there fish and chips in Australia? Absolutely, absolutely. As a matter of fact, Harry, I was going to give you a word from a fish and chips reference. But, I, but I'm not because it's just too easy. But yeah, well, we have fish and chips. Smash it down in Australia. Harry, by the way, dude, you would love Australia, man, because you have enough English in you where yeah. you get down there and everything, would, you'd feel right at home. But you got the beach. You got the good weather. So there you go. Yeah. I, think, I think Australia sounds like it would be cool. Oh, just dude, not, Harry, you... not, not in like the, the, like the no man's land Australia. Though. No, no, no. Like... no the beach. Just, just stay on the beach. Stay on the East Coast. Yeah. That, yeah. That's right. Oh, you'd love it. You'd love it for sure. Listen, hey, Harry. I've kept you for too long, mate. This has been an absolute blast, but I I am really excited. I've said this a thousand times. You just haven't heard me, but I'm really excited to see you in a Seattle Mariners uniform here in Seattle, man, because everything, obviously you're stud on the field. Everyone knows that, but the way you are off the field, man, it is rare. You get it. Harry Ford, do not ever change. Uh, you want one of my favorites coming up, man. I can't wait to see you here in Seattle. Thanks, man. Appreciate it.